Got a carny on me popping when I shoot, I never miss. She gon' ask if I'm in love, I never lie, plead the fifth. Only want me cause I'm icy and I'm pricey with the fifth. Okay, so it has been a minute. I just got back from Phoenix last night. And I'm happy to get back into the swing of things as soon as possible. It is Sunday morning, 8, 18 a.m., bright and early. And we are jumping right back in where we left off with this Outlaw series, man. I'm so excited to get back into it. So let's go. So to start off this episode, we're going to jump into postcom and we're going to simulate the rest of the season. We're going to go over postseason uh, awards, the all NBA team, stuff like that. And then we're going to jump into our first round series of the NBA playoffs, which right now we are the first seed in the Western conference. I think we're like the two seed in the NBA. Oh uh, yeah. Right now we clinched, um, clinched our play in berth, obviously 47 and 24. I'd hope we would. Uh, the Pelicans are right hot on our tail, three wins behind. And then the, the Hornets kind of clinched clinch the conference uh over out east so i'm gonna simulate the rest of this you guys will hear about what happens throughout the rest of the season and how we finish uh standings wise and then you guys will hear about the postseason awards all of that good stuff and then we'll jump right into the first round series before i get into postseason awards to end this season we had 11 games to get to to secure the one seed out west and we wanted to gain some momentum rolling into the playoffs so we ended the season with a 7-4 record in our final 11 games, netting us a total of a 54-28 record and the one seed in the Western Conference playoffs. Three to four games clear of the two seed New Orleans Pelicans, the two seed in the NBA behind the uh, Charlotte Hornets led by Lonzo Ball, LaMelo Ball, and Chet Holmgren. Our first postseason award, as always, we're going to start at the bottom of the totem pole. The first award we're going to go with is the Most Improved Player Award, and this award goes to a player on a team that doesn't get a ton of love. There are expansion rivals. Yes, you guys probably get it now, the Tampa Bay Panthers. The Most Improved Player Award for the 2024 campaign goes to Jaden Springer. Now, they get their first postseason award in history, that being the Tampa Bay Panthers. They get their first postseason or regular season award in their franchise history, and this coming from a 22-year-old in his fourth season in the league. He improved a ton from his 2023 to 2024 campaign, improving from 8 points per game to 15.4 points per game, and he slowly is proving he can run their offense for years to come improving from 3.6 assists per game to 7 assists per game. His true shooting took a hit by one percentage point, but with an increased usage from 16.7% to 19.6%, that could easily be explained. Next, we go to the sixth man of the year award, and this one goes to a guy in his third year in the league. He was drafted 18th in the 2022 NBA draft, so he's been in the league for a little bit now, three seasons in, as I already said. He's slowly starting to prove himself. He's still coming off the bench for the Indiana Pacers, and his man is Max Christie. Max, in his third season, is only improving, posting 21 points per game and a steal on 48-44-84 splits off the bench for Indiana this season. He's 21 years old, and with his size being six foot seven at the two-guard spot, he is oozing with potential, and it truly will be a blast to see him pan out in the coming seasons. Next, we go to the Rookie of the Year, and this one goes to none other than Elton Cannon's teammate, Ron Kane from the Utah Jazz. Ron in his rookie season posted 15-13, a steal, and a block, though on 43-28-73 splits, which obviously is absolutely horrendous. This is a great start to his NBA career, and he's slowly living up to his expectations. He's gained after being taken first overall in this last season's draft. Finally, we get down to the big two postseason awards, and we're going to go with Defensive Player of the Year first. He's going back-to-back, -back, picking up his fifth Defensive Player of the Year award throughout his career, and this is none other than the Greek freak from the Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Like I said, picking up his fifth career Defensive Player of the Year award and his first time going back-to-back -back with Defensive Player of the Year awards in his 12th season at the age of 30 years old. Giannis seemingly only gets better. This season on the defensive end, he put up two steals and two and a half blocks per game, while also leading the league in defensive rating and being one of the most versatile defenders the league has seen in recent memory. And now, finally, the MVP. The MVP last season was won by Charlotte's own LaMelo Ball. And this season, the MVP comes down to three players, that being LaMelo Ball once again with a chance to go back to back on MVPs, John Morant. Las Vegas' own John ja Morant is in the running for the MVP this season. And then the third player in the running is Zion Williamson. Leading the Pelicans to the two seed in the Western Conference right behind John ja Morant and his Las Vegas Outlaws. And then LaMelo Ball leading the Charlotte Hornets to a historic first seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, your MVP for the 2024-2025 campaign is 
LaMelo Ball once again. He goes back to back for the first time in his career on MVPs, averaging 27 points per game, seven rebounds, eight assists, and two and a half steals per game. All of this on 53, 45, 86 splits, which is absolutely ridiculous. Needless to say though, he took a slight hit in terms of offensive production from his MVP season, but he did bring Charlotte back to the one seed in historic fashion alongside his brother Lonzo and his big man Chet Holmgren. Let's just say LaMelo deserves this one. Okay, now, all of these simulation, I mean, we're still going to simulate the first round series, and we're still going to do the first round series in post-com, but we have the postseason awards done, we have the end of the year simulation done, now it is time to sit back and watch the play and simulate, because we need, a, we need a, an opponent, and it is the Oklahoma City Thunder, the eighth seed in the Western Conference, I want to take a look at their squad, the Mavericks, uh, win the play-in tournament and they get to play the two-seeded uh, New Orleans Pelicans which is going to be a fun matchup if we do end up meeting them in the Western Conference Finals now it's also going to be fun to see if we are going to play the Memphis Grizzlies in the second round of the playoffs because as you guys know if you are a long time watcher of the series you know we have some history with this Grizzlies team okay so they're going to be playing this first round series without Shea but even without Shea they have a solid team they have Bam Adebayo running the five for him he's a really good center one of the best in the league Jaden Hardy running the two Josh Giddy probably is going to run the one for them in this first series with Shea Gilgis Alexander possibly being out the entire series they have a decent squad do I think it's as good as we are no and I do think that we match up quite quite well against this Oklahoma City Thunder team if you look at our squad we kind of have one of the best starting fives in the league and I think we match up quite well, especially since they're not starting Jaden Hardy. Instead of starting Jaden Hardy at the two and moving Giddy to the one, that's not my call to make. We take those. So before I start simulating stuff, we got the kombucha on deck. I'm never going to forget the kombucha ever again. Even if I just got off of a week vacation to Phoenix, Arizona, we're never going to forget the kombucha ever again. But I'm excited for this Oklahoma City Thunder series, and I'm excited to see if we are going to get the Grizzlies in the second round. I really want to play the Grizzlies in the second round, bro. Their team isn't good, but I want to play him in the second round. Nikola Jovic, I want to send him packing. Jaron Jackson, I want to send him packing. He's a he's a Outlaws legend, but I want to send him packing nonetheless. Now, out east, I want to get a, a scope of the Eastern Conference playoffs. We have the Hornets and the Miami Heat in the first round. The Hornets the ball brothers running the one and the two lamello and alonzo and then you got you know one of the best centers in the league at the moment in chat holmgren he's not top three because right now top three in the simulation is Jokic, ayton and Embiid in that order but Jokic is nowhere to be seen in this postseason Jokic actually wasn't Jokic got eliminated in the play and he was his team was the eighth seed i believe if he's still on the nuggets yes he is they got eliminated by the dallas mavericks and luka Doncic. So then you got the Pacers and the Orlando Magic. The Pacers led by Jimmy Butler and DeMontis Sabonis with the sixth man of the year, Max Christie, off the bench, which is an absolute W. And then the Orlando Magic led by Jalen Suggs and Nikola Vucevic. They have an all-around well-rounded starting five with Jalen Suggs, Shaden Sharp, uh, Patrick Baldwin Jr., John Isaac, and Nikola Vucevic. Markel Fultz contributing a lot off the bench. And then Franz Wagner uh, slowly coming into his own off the bench with Lonnie Walker IV and Eric Paschal uh, also contributing off the bench. And then the three versus 60 matchup, the Toronto Raptors, and the Boston Celtics. Damian Lillard in Toronto. I forgot about that. Him and Scotty Barnes forming a formidable duo. Scotty Barnes picking up his first All-NBA selection, getting All-NBA third team this season. They also got Moses Brown, who was an absolute problem against us in that episode. And then the Boston Celtics, led by Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, still cooking up in Boston with a backcourt of Killian Hayes and Mike Conley. Now, I ha I'm a big fan of their starting five. Mike Conley, Killian Hayes, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and then Robert Williams, and they have Yusuf Nurkic playing the six-man role. I'm a big fan of that starting five. They're a nice starting five, but will is it enough to get it done? They are the sixth seed, so they have, do have a ton of work to do, and they have a formidable starting five uh, coming up against Amari Bailey, Damian Lillard, and Scotty Barnes uh, in Toronto. And then the final first-round series out east is the Brooklyn Nets, led by Kyrie Harden, KD, and Clint Capella, the team that took us out in the NBA Finals two seasons ago but now they're a lot older they're a ton older kevin durant how old is he he's 36 clink capella is 30 james harden's up there too 35 and then Kyrie is 33 they're an old big three plus clink capella they still have dimwitty they have devin vassell they're still a very good team obviously because they're the two seed in the east and then the detroit pistons making another run to the playoffs cade cunningham up to a 94 overall leading this Detroit Pistons team to the playoffs alongside Sadiq Bey and Karis Levert and Lou Dort. Oh, they also have Jaden Ivey. 
Do I think they'll make a deep run? No, unless Cade Cunningham really pulls something out of his ass. And then the one series I forgot to cover. Actually, I forgot to cover all of the, the Western Conference series. Obviously, there's the Grizzlies. We know the Grizzlies really well. And then the Houston Rockets led by Kemba, Jalen Green, and Alfred Sangoon in their starting five. And then obviously there's Jackson Hayes there off the bench. Kenyon Martin Jr., a pretty young starting five. I don't think they'll make much noise in the playoffs, but if they get past the Grizzlies, that'll be a W for the Rockets. And then the Golden State Warriors taking on the King. Steph Curry making another run into the playoffs at the age of 37. He's still a 94 overall. Absolutely cooking up in Golden State. Let's look at his averages. Yeah, Steph showing no sign of slowing down. He had a 50-50-90 season this season. He's he's absolutely whipping it up over in Golden State and that's them the three seed and then Jonathan Kuminga Pascal Siakam Moses Moody they have a really good starting five it would be tough to match up against the Golden State Warriors whatsoever and then I want to look at the Kings there's Ben Simmons in Sacramento with Patrick Williams AJ Griffin Kevin Herter and Macau Bridges they have a nice little team over in Sacramento I don't think they'll make much noise though and then we already talked about the Pelicans we played them in the last episode it was a ton of fun with their big three of BI Zion and then Victor Wimbanyama they also have the supporting cast Kira Lewis Jr. Devontae Graham Christian Wood Gene Montana Terrell Perry George they have a really nice uh, team there over in New Orleans we're gonna make a ton of noise in this playoffs I can already sense it I hope we match up against them in the Western Conference Finals because that would be a ton of fun and then you got the Dallas Mavericks led by Luka Doncic Mark Cuban still unable to build around his stars since ever since the Dirk Nowitzki era he hasn't built much around his stars and now Luka the damn near the only guy over in 80 overall uh, not counting Benedict and Miles Bridges. Luke is the only one um, over an 83 overall on this team. All right, so without further ado, we have some simulation to do. We're going to simulate this first round series like we always do. We also simulate the second round series. And then if we get the Pelicans in the Western Conference Finals, if we make it that far, we will not simulate that one because that will be an absolute banger of a series. So I'm going to get into simulating this Thunder series. I'll see you in post comp. Let's go. So... This is not how I expected this first game to go. We were getting blown out on our home floor in the first round against the eight-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder. Are we underestimating the Thunder? Maybe. But, bro, there's no reason we should be getting blown out at home. Getting blown out at all against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Why? Why are we losing? I have no idea. This is blasphemous right now. If we lose a first round series to the Oklahoma City Thunder, I will be quite pressed. This one was quite mind boggling as to how we lost this one. John Morant, 26 points on 11 for 16. He played a good game. DeAndre Ayton, 33% from the field is absolutely unacceptable. In 40 minutes, only 20 points and 16 rebounds and four blocks, four turnovers. Not a good game from DeAndre Ayton. Tyrese Halliburton, 12 points. I think we might have lost because Dyson Daniels wasn't starting. But nonetheless, we shouldn't be losing to the eighth-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm just keeping it a buck. That's not a game we should lose. And if we lose in this first-round series, I'm going to be pretty livid if I'm keeping it real. And Dyson Daniels did start. He's starting and he's playing a ton of minutes. I don't understand. I don't get it. We're, we might have to adjust some sim points of emphasis. Nope, that's literally how I want it to be. Um... I, Tyrese Halliburton is going to be our third scoring option instead of Dyson Daniels. Sorry, Dyson. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Second game. Let's get into it. All right, bro. This is getting out of hand. We're down 16 in the first round once again. We're jumping in. I'm not going to take this L. We're not going to take this L. We're going to get the plays popping. There is no shot. I'm going to sit here and watch us lose to the eighth seeded Oklahoma City Thunder. It's just not going to happen. I need to make sure I have my plays ready. And we're going to get into this one, and we're going to take this W, because there's no shot you're going to watch me lose to this Oklahoma City Thunder squad. Come on now, bro. Giddy open in the corner, extends the Thunder's lead to 19. We are getting absolutely embarrassed here by the Oklahoma City Thunder. There's no reason we should be losing right now. Dyson Daniels open in the corner. Get that off. Look, Bill. Wow, I can't talk it. I can't shoot either. This is blasphemous. Tyrese Halliburton picks up his fifth. Oh, I don't know what's up with 2K in making me lose stupid series. I don't understand. I don't get why we're losing to the Oklahoma City Thunder. We lost in the first round last season, two to the Mavericks. Why this? No, we lost in the second round last year. But our team is so good. Why are we losing? There we go. Dyson getting the offense going. He's in double digits. For the first time in the playoffs this season, cuts the lead down to 19. We have a ton of ground to make up, but the fact that we're down whatsoever to the Thunder is making me very upset. 
the Thunder are playing with their backups in right now, and we are getting cooked by the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm so, I'm just upset that they're in this game and we're getting blown out. John Morant blows by whoever that is, Trey Mann, I believe, or Terrence Mann, one of the mans on the Oklahoma City Thunder in the sim. Now we only trail by 17, but bro, this has been a blasphemous series to say the least. There's no reason we should be losing this series. This series shouldn't be close. It really shouldn't be close. Our team is that good that this series shouldn't be close. It should be a four-game sweep, and that's literally, that's it. It should just be a four-game sweep. Dyson, oh my god, they hedge. Dyson Daniels hits it anyway. Oh my God, Paolo. Paolo Banchero with the rebound, and he throws it down on Jaden Hardy. Cuts the Thunder lead from 21 down to 12. Paolo Banchero, another block. He's been blocking Bam out of IO a lot down low, and now he's sending Larry Market into the moon. You'll love to see the defense from Paolo Banchero. He's turning up the heat when it matters most. That's good defense from Paolo. That's another stop. Oh, DeAndre Ayton, that's a good roll to the rim. Big fella, you got to throw that down. You can't go up soft like that. Oh, we dump it off to DeAndre Ayton. They're doubling John Morant. We find our big man down low in the dunker spot. He throws it down. Cuts this Thunder lead back down to 12. We're slowly inching our way back into this one. A minute and a half to play in the third. We're slowly making a run to, to take a game in this series. God damn. John Morant to the cup again. He throws it down on the head of Laurie Markkinen. John Morant making his presence known and known we're not going down without a fight. John Morant needs to switch on that because I pick up Giddy with Paulo Banchero and John Morant just refuses to switch on the uh, Larry Markkinen, leaving Larry Markkinen wide open for a three-point look. They leave Reese in the corner. Get that off, Reese. Get that off, Reese. Let's go. We got eight seconds to go get a bucket before the buzzer. John Morant blows by the center. John Morant cuts the lead down to single digits before the fourth quarter. It's an eight-point deficit here in Las Vegas. We slowly inched our way back into it. We started the simulation. Six minutes left in the third, down 21. And now we're down eight, coming into the fourth. Let's go, Outlaws. Come on. John ja Morant giving Giddy the absolute work. Let's go. Oh my God. Job ja blows by Giddy on his head top. Oh my God. Oh my God. On his head top. Come on. Dyson Daniels for three, cuts the Thunder lead back down to four, and early release three goes in. That just shows how hot we are right now in this fourth quarter of basketball. The starters battling with Oklahoma City th uh, starters. Bro, DeAndre, you can't be leaving their shooters open. That's good defense on Bam. Let's go. Oh, they leave Dyson Daniels open top of the key. They're going to regret that one real quick. Now it is a one-point deficit. 93-94. We cut their 21-point lead down to one within a quarter. We're here, and we're ready to fight for this game. John Morant for the lead. Throw it down, big fella. Throw it down, big fella. We now lead in this game, too. Wow. Tyrese Halliburton fouls out. Bam draws the charge. Tyrese, a lackluster showing. Eight points, six fouls. Emmanuel quickly is going to... I said Emmanuel quickly, and they sub in Kobe White. I want Emmanuel quickly to finish out the game uh, running the two. Miscommunication defensively doesn't matter. Pokashevsky misses. They bring in Terrence Mann to defend John Morant. That's a bad mistake. That's a fucking mistake. Wow. Why are we leaving Pokashevsky open when that man is hot? Why are, what are we doing? 
Oh, but they leave Dyson Daniels open. Dyson Daniels for three wide open. Bang! Emmanuel quickly just leaving the shooters open? What are we doing? Why are we leaving Jaden Hardy wide open in the corner, bro? Come on. Come on, quickly. What is this? This is the NBA playoffs. Oh, man. They, DeAndre Ayton's cooking, and they let John Morant get into play. Take, excuse me. Excuse me. We'll, we take those. Get out of my way. Excuse me. John Morant taking this game over single-handedly. We now lead by three, six and a half to play in game two. It is now a three-point outlaws lead, our biggest lead of this game. The Thunder have led throughout the entirety of this ball game and throughout the entirety of this series in general. This series has been a tough one, and they're playing without their best player in Shea Gildas Alexander. Bam, with the tough look over DeAndre Ayton. It's still blasphemous that we're that the Thunder are giving us problems and they're playing without Shea Gilgis. Quickly for three, John Morant finds his shooter at the hash. Bro, we're firing on all cylinders right now. We just need a few stops and a few buckets and we're gonna take a pretty sizable lead here. And this is the time to do it. Five and a half to play in the fourth. This is the time to take the game over. John Morant already has. But as a team, we need to play some good team basketball to come out with the win here quickly. We can't be leaving shooters. Come on now. I know they just ran an off-ball set for him, but we can't be leaving shooters. Oh, that's that's barbecue chicken. Give me that. Quickly, another big shot. Bang! We now lead by two possessions. It's a six-point outlaws lead. We're slowly but surely running away with this one. Ja Morant up to 31 and 15 on the night. Ja Morant has taken this game over and possibly brought us the dub. A minute and a half to play in game two. We need a dagger. Let's get a dagger. Let's close this game out and, and head into game three with some momentum. Emmanuel quickly, dagger! All right, game two is over. We take a big W to get some momentum in this series. John Morant, 37 and 17 on 17 for 20 splits. It's absolutely wild. He took this game over and forced a 29-point turnaround. Dyson Daniels, 22 points, nine rebounds on eight for 16 from the field. Dyson was absolutely phenomenal in the turnaround of this game. You love to see it. DeAndre Ayton was also huge, 16, 19, and five blocks. Emmanuel quickly was huge as well, 16 points, 13 and 11 for Paolo Banchero. Tyrese Halliburton had his worst game probably as an outlaw, but it is what it is. We took a big W here. Let's keep pushing. All right, so it looks like game two did give us a ton of momentum. We come into game three and take a 20-point W in Oklahoma City to take a 2-1 lead in the series. Paolo Banchero, 23 points. Absolutely hooping. Tyrese Halliburton with 19. Precious Achua in the game to close it out. Dyson, 14 points. It looks like it was another big team win. I'm so thankful we're winning games in this series. Let's go. It was a 114-93 finish. Terrence, or Trey Man, their top scorer with 22 points. And then Bam Adebayo, 20, 10, and 3 blocks. On our side of the ball, Paolo Banchero led the charge, 25 and 14. Tyrese Halliburton, 21. Emmanuel quickly, 19. A lot of our role players showing out. Tyrese Halliburton having a good game with five steals as well. John Morant, a quiet outing, but... He was efficient, 7 for 12. Dyson Daniels, our worst probably performer, 5 for 18 from the field, 14 points. Nonetheless, massive W, 114 to 93. And we were pretty efficient on everything except, you know, 37 for 89 from the field. All right, so game four is another blowout. We take a 3-1 lead against the Oklahoma City Thunder box score. Uh, for game four, Trey Mann, their top score, 36 points from Trey Mann. Pokashevsky, 15. John Morant leads the charge for us once again, 23 and 6 assists on 9 for 17 from the field and 3 for 8 from 3. Paolo Banchero, 23 points. Emmanuel quickly, 16. DeAndre Ayton, 14 and 16. And Tyrese Halliburton, 11 and 9. Almost a double-double for him. Dyson, 11. Kobe White, 11. We had seven players in double digits to take a 3-1 lead here. I think we can, we're can. we going to be able to close this one out on our home floor in Las Vegas. Let's finish this one out. Simcast. We, we're out to a good, we're out to a healthy start. Healthy start, and it looks like we are going to get out of the first round as we should. I was so upset. I, I knew we needed momentum after game one, and we go into game two, take a big W after a 20-point turnaround, and now we close out we close out the first series or first round series and Paolo Banchero is going to be out for one to two weeks, which is, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. One to two weeks. Um, I don't know if he'll be back for the second round series against the Houston Rockets. The Grizzlies, who I wanted to play, are gone. Dorian Finney-Smith, is Dyson Daniels injured too? 
No, Dyson's not injured. Why is Dorian Finney-Smith starting over Dyson Daniels? I never said to, I never said to do that. Dorian Finney-Smith will not be starting on a team of mine. He will not be starting. Hate to say it, he just will not be starting for me. Dyson Daniels is still my starting small forward. And that wraps this one up. If you enjoyed, as always, make sure you show some love down below. It's free. It only helps our community here grow. We are in the second round against the five-seeded Houston Rockets. And then the Pelicans and Warriors advanced in the uh, other two series. The uh, Pacers out east get past the Magic. And then, obviously, the Hornets take the Heat in five. And then the Celtics take the Raptors in a seven-game series in seven. And then the Pistons upset the Nets in five. Okay, the Nets are gone. The only other team out east I'm concerned about is the Hornets, but we also have two really good teams in our own conference in the Pelicans and Warriors. So this is going to be a very fun star-studded playoffs. So that's it. If you enjoyed, as always, make sure to show some love down below. It's free. It only helps the community grow on the road to 1K. You guys have been showing me a ton of support lately. And uh, even when I was in Phoenix, you guys showed me a ton of support. And I wasn't uploading for a week. So um, I love you all. I don't know if this video is going to come out Monday or Tuesday. It might come out one Monday, um, depending if I do find time to edit today, which I probably will because we always have time for YouTube. So that's it. I love you. You're beautiful. Peace.